We'll uh, proceed with the question and answer portion of our testimony, and I will begin. And let me say uh, publicly, the mayor and I met last week and had a very positive meeting where I pledged uh, that this committee would work with her uh, to try to uh, do anything we could to advance Washington, D.C. And I know from talking to Mayor Bowser that uh, she agrees that tackling the issue of crime is a priority uh, for her residents. Uh, and I know that uh, she filed uh, proposed legislation that she mentioned in her opening statement uh, called the Safer, Stronger Amendment Act, uh, which would amend several provisions of the D.C. criminal law. And uh, Mayor, you've often had differences of opinion with the D.C. Council when it comes to reducing crime. Uh, what would you say are the biggest differences between your approach and your council's? Well, Mr. Chairman, I will say, and I'm proud that I've, I've been elected three times now as mayor. I served on the Council of the District of Columbia prior to that for almost eight years. Uh, and I very much respect the role that each branch of our government uh, plays. My job uh, is to let the people of the District of Columbia and the council know what we need. I rely on professionals in public safety or education or human services who do their jobs day in and day out to advance the things that we need. Uh, and so our approach, and I think there are similarities um, with the council, is to make sure that we have a comprehensive, comprehensive approach to crime mm -hmm. that addresses enforcement, opportunity, and prevention. Uh, and we continue to do that. And when we differ, and we will, uh, I will make sure that D.C. residents and members know what the professionals say we need. Uh, do you agree that, especially in the case of violent criminals, it's important that there be consequences after an arrest to include prosecution and jail time where appropriate? I do. Are you concerned about a high number of declined prosecutions for individuals by the Metropolitan Police Department? Oh, I know that the Metropolitan Police Department, um, as our entire criminal justice system, as I described, is kind of a complicated soup. Mm -hmm. uh, some local that re report right. directly to me, uh, like the chief of police, some elected, like the attorney general for the District of Columbia and the members of the council, and then the courts. Uh, and so it's our job um, to make sure that we're all working together to make the district safer. Uh, Mr. Graves, you're the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia and the Chief Prosecutor overseeing the office responsible for prosecuting both federal and local crimes for the district, correct? Do you also believe it's important that there be consequences after an arrest to include prosecution and jail time where appropriate, especially for violent offenses? I'm a career prosecutor. Protecting the safety of the community is our number one mission. I absolutely agree with that statement. It's been reported that the U.S. Attorney's Office for D.C. that you oversee declined to prosecute 67% of individuals arrested for D.C. crimes in 2022. Is that accurate? So thank you for the question. Um, a little bit of context. Uh, as I said in my opening statement, in fiscal year 2022, we prosecuted over 90% of the arrests for the most serious violent crimes. Uh, fiscal year 2022, which was a snapshot in time, was a very unique year. Um, with a lot going on, the complicated soup uh, that the mayor refers to, uh, but I can report that our charging rates this year are already higher and trending upwards. Well, the 67% the, the is nearly double the 35% uh, declination rate from 2015, and it's much higher than the, the rate for many metropolitan areas. I'm sure you would point to many reasons for this discrepancy, but what I want to know is what do you plan to do to ensure your office can accept more cases for prosecution after an arrest is made for D.C. offenses? That's a great question, and we're focused on where we are now and how we move forward as opposed to what happened in the past. With respect to what happened in the past, mm -hmm. uh, the declination rate, the cases that we weren't charging, you see it increasing from 2016, fiscal year 2016, through fiscal year 2022, year over year. There are lots of complicated reasons for why that's occurring. I'm focused on what we can do to address that and driving down rates. Uh, Mayor Browser, this January, I, along with 17 of my colleagues on this committee, introduced the Show Up Act, uh, which passed the House in February. The Show Up Act would require federal agencies to return to their pre-pandemic levels with respect to telework. Do you support the idea that federal workers should once again 
return to work? I absolutely support that. Um, and I think that we can look at the district government as a guide. Uh, we, of course, all experienced the pandemic uh, and the necessary uh, changes to work life and personal life that went along with it. Uh, in addition uh, to, to answering your questions here, part of my day-to-day -day job as mayor of Washington, D.C. is managing 37,000 employees. Uh, and while we had modified operations, 40% of our employees were ne never eligible for telework. The minimum of the Metropolitan Police Department, fire and EMS, our public school teachers uh, who went into classrooms um, every day of the pandemic or soon after uh, we reopened. I reopened D.C. government in June of 21 following uh, March uh, the, the previous March where COVID uh, really changed our, our lives around the world. Uh, we have made some uh, allowances, of course. Uh, we have more telework than we did uh, before the pandemic, uh, but I require the agencies that report to me to show up three days a week. Thank you, Mayor. Hopefully uh, that bill will get a vote in the Senate.